This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we have an encouraging message from Jean Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy, exciting Hope Channel updates with Kenya Reyes. And an appetizing recipe from Gia and Olive. Stay with us. Happy Monday, friends. Thank you for joining us this morning at Wake Up With Hope. It is always refreshing to start our week with Jesus. That's right. We are so happy you're with us and we are here to help you start your week off right and bring the peace and love of God into your life. On today's program, we have Jean Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy joining us to share a wonderful message. Kenya Reyes will also be with us to share some exciting updates happening at Hope Channel. Gia and Olive are also joining us to share a delicious recipe. But first, this day in history. On October 11, 2002, former President Jimmy Carter was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his decades of untiring effort to find peaceful solutions to international conflicts, to advance democracy and human rights, and to promote economic and social development. Jimmy Carter served one term as United States President, from 1977 to 1981. Carter is recognized for mediating peace talks between Israel and Egypt. However, after his presidency, he continued to fight for human rights and alleviating human suffering. Together with his wife, they created the Carter Center in 1982 to continue their mission. He has also worked with Habitat for Humanity since 1984. Undoubtedly, Jimmy Carter is leaving a legacy in this country and the world. What about you, friends? What is your legacy? In Matthew 5, 14 through 16, Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And how can we let our light shine? By showing kindness, being unselfish, putting others first, loving one another unconditionally, and living every day for Jesus. If we live every day like Jesus, treating others the way He would, we will leave a certain legacy, friends. We will make an impact in someone's life. And more than this, we will give glory to our Heavenly Father. Let's all go out and let our lights shine starting today. Jesus can and will help us to be more like Him. Amen. And we also want to take a moment to wish everyone a happy Columbus Day. This morning on Wake Up With Hope, Gia, Olive, and Hannah are joining us to share a delicious and healthy samosa recipe. These ladies specialize in turning unhealthy foods into unguilty pleasures. Ladies? Three, two, one. Hi! I've got my little helpers in the break. They went for a swim, so they're all covered up. And we are making chickpea samosas this morning, aren't we? Yeah? Yummy? Do you like chickpeas? Yes, I know Hannah really likes chickpeas and Olive's been eating them all, so I don't know there's going to be much left for our recipe. So this is a sanitarium recipe and I absolutely love it because it's easy, it freezes really well, and it calls for two cans of chickpeas. <laughs> two cans of chickpeas. Everything can be done in the food processor, so it, there's nothing to it. I've got one whole red onion, I just throw it in there. You don't have to put chilli in it, but it does add a bit of spice. Careful, because if you touch this and then touch your eyes, it'll burn. One clove of garlic, throw it in there. The rind from the lemon juice that we're going to put in there. So one, one lemon juice and rind from that lemon, put it in there. And you use, usually we use fresh coriander, but we actually couldn't find any, so there must be short, a shortage at the moment. So we're using semi-dried coriander, and it's a whole bunch. Okay, you can put it in. All right. Whole bunch of coriander. Usually I just put the whole stem in there, the whole coriander stem, or half a bunch, depending on how big the bunch is. Oh, I'm gonna add, hold on, I'm gonna add a little bit. The sanitarium recipe doesn't have salt, but I like to add half a teaspoon of any good salt, like Himalayan. There we go. 
and we are now going to roll. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna scrape the sides down a little bit. Can you see the texture? So it's a bit flaky. We don't want it to be mush. You still want it to be a little flaky. If you like, you can put salad in there. Okay, that's it, done. Can you switch it off for me? Good work, okay. So we'll take it off, put it in here. So not too mushy, still flaky. This phyllo pastry, I didn't freeze, I didn't defreeze it properly. You're supposed to defrost it for a little while. And so half of it, not half of it, but maybe a quarter of it's missing. So I'm just gonna use this one. Usually you can make four of them. Can I eat? No, you can't. You guys just wanna eat everything. Do you wanna help me spray? <laughs> We're gonna spray a little bit of oil on top. Yeah. A little bit, just a little bit. And we're gonna put another phyllo pastry on top. And I might just touch a spray again, just so it sticks properly. And I cut with this one, I think maybe we can make three. Four. But usually you can make four on a, on a good size. And just one spoon, one heaped tablespoon on the top. It's okay if yours is a little more mushy. And then you just fold it over one side to make like a triangle, can you see that? and then you fold down and you keep folding into triangle shape until you've got your samosa. And then you put it on a tray, a baking tray, and we will be doing that and we'll come back and, we'll pop up. and show you the finished product. Our samosas are out of the oven and they cook perfectly. So as you can see here, They've just lightly brown, golden brown, mmm. And I'm gonna throw them on a plate. Don't forget that you can freeze these before you've cooked them. So as soon as you've um, made them into little triangles, you can put them in the freezer in a plastic bag and they'll last. Please visit us on our social media and let us know if you make any of our recipes, please comment and let us know how they turn out. See you next time. Say bye. Bye. Those chickpea samosas look absolutely delicious and so easy to make. So please let us know if you give it a try. Well, we have to take a short break, but when we return, Kenya Reyes will be sharing some exciting updates on what we have going on here at Hope Channel. And don't forget, if you're enjoying today's show, share it with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to visit recent episodes or see what else is going on at Hope Channel. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. We hope our program will be a refreshing way to start your Monday morning. Kenya Reyes is here with us today to share some exciting updates on what's happening here at Hope Channel. Hi Kenya, thank you for being here. Thank you so much Heidi and Christian and good morning to everyone. When you think of the mission field, what do you picture? Many times people paint this picture of a missionary traveling to a developing country, helping those in need and sharing Jesus with them. Although this is very much needed, there is a neglected class of people who are right next to us, a group that are for the most part very difficult to reach. Can you guess who I'm talking about? They are the secular and well-educated who prefer to be reasoned with based on their intellect, logic and science. Cliff Goldstein, a former atheist and now author and lecturer, understands firsthand the struggle with faith. Cliff is a stimulating program that draws from history, philosophy, science, and a hefty dose of logic in an effort to appeal to intellectuals about the existence of God and the efficacy of the gospel. Watch this short clip to get a sneak peek of what to expect. And again, listen to this quote. And as Christ in his aspiring, expiring agony on the cross cried out, it is finished. A shout of triumph rang through every world and through heaven itself. Whew. That's an amazing thought. And of course, it fits perfectly with the great controversy theme. Sin did not begin here on earth. Sin is not merely an earthly issue. It began in another part of the creation. Sin has cosmic implications, even though it is being played out here on the earth. And thus, these other intelligences 
are interested in what is going on here. And when Christ said, it is finished, this shout of triumph echoed through the creation. But you know, there is one little problem here. What's that? Well, this statement contradicts one of the most foundational and, fa and verified teachings of modern science, a foundational and very verified teaching, verified to an astonishing degree, to like a billionth of a second or so forth. It's called Einstein's special theory of relativity. Now, I'm sure we've all heard of it, even if we haven't all studied it or, or looked into it too deeply. Now, this whole thing is based on a single idea, the constancy of the speed of light. And you might remember from high school that light moves at a blinding 186,000 miles per second. Second, that's like seven times a second around the Earth at the equator. It's like two and a half times to the moon and back in a second. Zing! That's fast. Now, according to the theory, you know, it's the absolute fastest, not just that light or anything in the universe can travel. Nothing it is believed can go from under the speed of light to faster than the speed of light. Now, we've all heard sonic booms, haven't we? But that's just, you know, humans breaking the sound barrier with, what, 700-some miles an hour? But the light barrier, woo, the light barrier is a whole other ball of wax. Hasn't been done, and supposedly, according to Einstein's theory, it can't be done. And now here's a point to consider. According to his theory of relativity, special relativity, nothing can travel faster than light, 186,000 miles per second. Nothing. And that includes information. Information such as, for instance, that Christ died on the cross. Hmm, can you see a potential issue here, okay? If you want a real logical foundation for your faith, you will want to watch Cliff here on Hope Channel. Start watching today at hopetv.org slash cliff. And remember, we want to hear from how Hope Channel has impacted your life, and we want to hear it right now. Share your testimony with us at sharyourstory@hopetv.org. We cannot wait to hear your stories. Well, that's all for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Now back to you, Heidi and Christian. Thank you, Kenya. We have to take a short break now, but when we come back, Voice of Prophecy's Gene Boonstra will be sharing today's devotional message. Stay with us, Wake Up With Hope. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Gene Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy is with us this morning to share this morning's devotional thought. Gene, we can't wait to hear what you'll be sharing today. A few weeks back, we talked about honesty. Now, you've been learning about how to be honest since your toddler years. But how honest are you with a very important person in your life? How honest are you with you? How well do you really know yourself? Well, taking an honest look at ourselves isn't always easy, but I invite us to do that again today. How are your relationships with those you interact with? When you take an honest look at how you interact with the people in your work, your home, and even your church life, is everything as it should be? How do you value the people in your life? And how do you value your role in others' lives? Well, I don't know about you, but when I take an honest look at my relationships with others, I can feel undervalued. You know, there are times as a pastor's wife 
when I feel invisible. At a family wedding not too long ago, my husband and I were enjoying talking with our family around the table and celebrating together. My husband Sean was seated on the outer edge of the table and a dear lady came over to talk to him. Well, he put on his pastor hat and he talked to her for a few minutes, his back physically turned to the family. It was okay, it's what pastors do. And he rejoined the family a few minutes later and then he was pulled away into another conversation. The well-meaning church members weren't thinking about his time with the family. We were invisible to them. And it left me feeling, if I'm honest, undervalued. You know, this sort of thing happens all the time to me in the context of being a pastor's wife. Once when we were working in Europe, a woman pushed past me in a row of seats. She grumbled and she frowned at me as I struggled to stand up and get out of her way so that she could pass by. When I sat back down, I watched her approach my husband. She smiled and she handed him a lovely wrapped package. They talked for a few minutes and then as she approached the seats again, I quickly got up to make way for her to get past me to sit down. She scowled at me as she passed <laughs> and made her way to her seat. I discovered later that the package that she handed to my husband, it was a handmade gift for his wife, <laughs> for me. She clearly didn't know who I was when she passed me in the seats. I felt invisible, undervalued. And you know, I know that I'm not the only one to feel this way in relation to others. We can all feel invisible in the presence of others. Perhaps you've been overlooked for a promotion or not been invited to a social event or not been recognized for your hard work on a project invisible and undervalued. When we're honest with ourselves, we each feel that way sometimes. Well, feeling undervalued and unappreciated, that happens when our eyes are on us. Honestly, it's, it's not a bad thing to be reminded that we are not the center of the universe. Our needs, our lives, our presence can be overlooked by others. That happens to each of us all the time. And the Bible gives us an alternative to feeling invisible, and that's to focus on the needs of others. Romans chapter 15 describes it this way, and let's read it together. It's Romans 15 verses 2 and 3. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. You know, in these verses, Paul encourages us to please our neighbors, those that we relate to each day at work, at home, at church, those people instead of ourselves. And when we turn our thoughts away from us and any discomforts or feelings of invisibility that we might have, and instead think about those around us, it leads to edification. And by thinking of others instead of ourselves, we can edify or uplift those around us. Instead of thinking about our own discomfort or invisibility, when we shift our focus to others, we can play a part in blessing them spiritually. You know, at that family wedding, I tried that. When another church member engaged my husband in conversation, I pushed down my own discomfort and my feelings of invisibility. I introduced myself and I asked some questions about the situation that they were talking about. His attention, the church member's attention, still wasn't really on me, but that was okay. I was able to contribute to the conversation and even to thank him for something that he shared with us. Edification. I was uplifted and I was encouraged in that process. You know, Jesus was a wonderful example of this for us. As the verse in Romans 15 shared, Jesus did not think of himself. He lived for others. We're told in other places in scripture that Jesus did not have a place to lay his head. He didn't have the comforts of home while he ministered to others. And when Jesus entered the upper room and there was no servant to wash the disciples' feet, 
he took on that role. He thought of his disciples and not of his own needs. And ultimately, Jesus took on our sins at the cross. The words we just read in Romans are quoted from the Psalms. Jesus allowed the reproach of others to fall on him instead of on us. Reproach. He took on the blame and the punishment that rightly belonged to us. You know, when I take an honest look at my relationships, I realize that when my thoughts are centered on me, I can feel undervalued. And honestly, none of us likes to see evidence of our self-centeredness in our own lives. But looking at ourselves honestly means that we can choose other ways to go about our lives. And Jesus' way of life is so much better. We are never invisible to Him. He cares about us, and His way means that we can start to see others the way that He does, to value others. When we're focused on the people around us, our feelings of invisibility can disappear. And when we choose to edify others, we feel uplifted. Honestly, God's way is the better way, and I'm thankful for that. How about you? Well, I enjoy praying with each of you in our Wake Up With Hope family each week. Let's pray together again today. Dear Lord, when I'm honest with myself and with you, sometimes I feel undervalued by others. Father, help me to push past those feelings and to think of those around me instead. Lord, thank you for your promise that we can each be edified when we choose your way. Lord, send us an opportunity to uplift someone at work, at home, or church this week. Amen. Amen. Well, taking an honest look at ourselves isn't always easy. It can be difficult to see self-centered actions and feelings in our own lives. But when we're honest, God will show us a better option. Thinking of others uplifts both of us. I encourage you to be an uplifter this new week. We at The Voice of Prophecy pray that you wake up with hope each and every day. Thank you for starting your Monday morning with us. Whatever this new week has in store, you can have hope in the midst of it. Thank you so much, Jean. Friends, thank you so much for being with us today and watching Wake Up With Hope. If you would like to learn more about our program or watch and share with a friend, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. And please join us tomorrow morning. Elizabeth Talbot from Jesus 101 will be with us to share a devotional thought and the Let's Pray team will be with us for a prayer session. We also have a special feature by Live It. Be sure to join us. Also, if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and would like to learn more, please visit us at hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. Friends, we hope your heart is full this morning and that you have a happy Monday filled with the peace and love of God in your heart. Before we go, we want to share with you a special Bible promise. Today's Bible promise comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 15. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. What a timely message and a promise, friends. God wants to give us His Holy Spirit so we can be His and be truly free. When we accept the sacrifice that Jesus has made for us and surrender our lives to Him, He promises to give us the Holy Spirit. We truly become a part of the family of God. I want to be set free, friends, don't you? Let's pray that we will surrender all to Jesus and that we would become true members of the heavenly family. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, that you have given us precious promises to begin this new week. Lord, today, by faith, we claim those promises because in you, they are all yes. In you, we can be certain that we are not leading or going the wrong way. In you, Lord, we can have that assurance that you are leading us down the path that leads to life. And we pray, Lord, that you would remind us that we are not alone in this journey. We have you as our Heavenly Father. We have the company of angels who protect us and minister to us. And we have one another. 
So thank you, Lord, for these wonderful promises, and we claim them today. In Jesus' name, amen.